Okay, so it's the Sioux Kitchen. And down the street here to the jail. Hill Valley Police Station. Christ, this place looks old, even for 1931. Jail window. Doc! <gasps> Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You saved for me, Doc. I'm just fucking around. See you later, Doc. When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? The automatic retrieval system. Of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. Yeah, right. Basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car. Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. <laughs> hey, Scott, I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? I guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? <laughs> Work your 30s, go back in time, make a stand, talk to the gangsters. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this year are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided. Do you? <laughs> Alright, I guess that doesn't work. Alert the authorities? Why do you tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? <laughs> they ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Alright, we can go back in time or make a stand. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Oh, Jesus. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, <laughs> Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. I guess you could break out of jail. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> That's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. What? Like a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great. I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. Maybe to help you finish it. Oh, jeez. How am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely. <laughs> Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Hmm. Suppose you... How am I supposed to get you to build a drill? Where can I find your younger self? Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Uh -huh. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. <laughs> I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Oh, boy. All right, back to the soup kitchen to make a phone call.
Hello. A free phone. Really? Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I can find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Ooh, yeah, I see his calling. The courthouse? Huh. Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Alright, now we're going back to the courthouse. What the hell? The controls went weird right there for a second. <laughs> Einstein! What's up, brother? Hey, how you doing, Einie? Alright, to the courthouse. <laughs> Where the hell is it? <laughs> These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. His dad was a judge? Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, uh, Harry Callahan. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, H2K multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of the right? What am I missing here? Or do we... Listen, Emmett, you don't know me. I'm your friend. Huh. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. What are you doing? I have something important for you to do. When will you be finished? I hear you're working on a rocket drill. Here we go. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, right. which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. <laughs> uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. I hear you're working on a rocket drill. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? <laughs> you must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Oh boy, he's trying to trying to defend it from his dad, probably. His dad doesn't want him to be interested in science. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets, but I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I am not a scientist. Oh, God. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> See, I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> oh, for the love of God. Hello? No solicitors! Now what do I do? Oh, Alright, let's go back out. Gail, Zemeckis, and... Will you just give me a chance? <laughs> Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Chasing this guy back and forth, it's pretty funny. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. No, oh, that was <laughs> again. If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character. Oh, God. This is terrible. Wait, is that even possible? Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. All right, so the rocket drill isn't working. Let's ask him what he's What's doing. This important business you're up to. It's a legal matter, very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop, I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party in the first part. 
You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. <laughs> Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the legal eagle act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Callahan, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Did huh? Dad tell you that? Every morning. <laughs> so, Emmett, what time are you through with work? It depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till nine. Nine at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before ten. <laughs> what about quitting early? How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Sound a little scared. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. 